Okay, basic statistics and probability lecture, April the 13th, take two. You probably didn't even know there was a take one. Well, I kind of flubbed uh, 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 the first one uh, so much that I was embarrassed and felt I had to start over again. All right. All right, so chapter 7 is about point estimation of parameters, oops, and sampling distributions. And we're going to talk about those at such a length you'll hardly even believe it. What I did not realize until I started fooling around with this presentation getting ready to do this today was that this is actually the slideshow for the last book. So I kind of went through and changed a few things uh, uh, getting ready uh, uh, for today's lecture. All right, the chapter outline. Ooh, ooh, heard me. Learning objectives. All right, so a point estimate is a reasonable value of a population parameter. Okay, what is a population parameter? The mean is a population parameter. The variance, the standard distribu distribution, those are all population parameters. Uh, so if we assume that x1, x2, dot, 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 up to xn are random variables, then the functions associated with these random variables, which would be x bar, which should have a bar over the top of it here, uh, and variance, s squared, are also random variables, and we call them statistics. I'll bet you never thought it would be till April before you'd find out what are statistics. So our statistics have their own unique distributions, which are called sampling distributions. Right? A, a, pop, uh, a, a sample from a population is going to have a slightly different distribution than the population itself. Okay, so a point estimator, uh, a point estimate of a population parameter theta, okay, this is a lowercase theta here. It looks like a zero with a crossed bar is a single numerical value uh, theta hat of a statistic uh, capital theta hat. Okay, this is capital theta hat and this is theta hat. Okay, notice the little hat on the top. The statistic capital theta hat is called the point estimator. So, as a, an example, suppose the random variable x is normally distributed with an unknown mean mu. The sample mean is a point estimator of the unknown population uh, mean mu. That is to say, mu hat equals x bar. After the sample has been selected, the numerical value x bar is the point estimate of mu. So if x1 equals 25, x2 equals 30, x3 equals 29, and x4 equals 31, 
the point estimate of mu is x bar equals 25 plus 30 plus 29 plus 31. That quantity divided by 4 equals 28.75. Right? This example is on page 150 in your book. Um, some parameters and their statistics. So our parameter mu is the mean of a single population and its statistic is x bar. All right, um, you may notice this looks a little messed up because I was not happy with what they had done and I went back and put in my own symbols. Our sigma squared, our variance of a single population, has a statistic of s raised to the uh, second power, or the sample variance. Sigma, our standard deviation of a single population, has a statistic of s, or sample standard deviation. P, our proportion of a single population, is uh, has a statistic of P hat. Mu 1 minus mu 2, the difference in means of two populations, is symbolized by x bar 1 minus x bar 2 and p1 minus p2 the difference in proportions of two populations has a statistic of p hat 1 minus p hat 2 uh, so there could be choices for our point estimator of a parameter. So when we estimate the mean of a population, we could choose the sample mean, the sample median, or the average of the largest and smallest observations in the sample. Okay, so let's look at some definitions. The random variables x1, x2, dot, 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 up to xn are a random sample of size n if the xi's are independent random variables. In other words, it can't depend on what came before or what comes after. Every xi has the same probability distribution. So, a statistic is any function of the observations in a random sample. the probability di um, distribution of a statistic is called a sampling distribution. Okay, so that gets us through our definitions and brings us to the central limit theory. If x1 x2 dot 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 up to xn is a random sample of size n and is taken from a population that is either finite or infinite with a mean of mu and a finite variance of sigma squared and if x bar is the sample mean, 
then the limiting form of the distribution uh, of z is z equals the quantity x bar minus mu over the quantity standard deviation divided by the square root of n. As n goes to infinity, in other words, n is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, this is the same as the standard normal distribution. All right, so we're looking at an example of the central limit theory. So suppose that our random variable x has a continuous uniform distribution. And that distribution is f of x is equal to 1 half from, uh, from 4 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 6. Otherwise, it is 0. So find the distribution of the sample mean of a random sample size n equals 40. All right. So, by the uh, central limit theorem, the distribution of x bar is normal. Why is that? Because we got a pretty large sample size. We usually figure that if you have a sample size of at least 30, then you um, uh, then probably we can treat it as a normal distribution. All right, in this case, though, we follow the rules for a continuous uniform distribution. So our mean equals b plus a divided by 2, or 6, oh, bloody hell, 6 plus 4 divided by 2 equals 5. Our variance is going to be, um, our variance is the quantity b minus a squared divided by 12, uh, 6 minus 4 squared, that's 2 raised to the second power is 4 divided by 12, 4 divided by 12 is 1 third. and that um, our sigma squared, our, our variance of x bar equals our variance divided by our sample size. So in this case, it's one-third divided by 40, which is going to be equal to 1 120th. All right, so here is our um, here is our uh, a distribution of uh, of uh, x bar and our variance of x bar equals one divided by one twenty. But what if we have a sampling distribution of a difference in sample means? If we have two independent populations that have means of mu1 and mu2 with variances sigma squared 1 and sigma squared 2, and if x bar 1 and x bar 2 
are the sample means of two independent random samples of sizes N1 and N2 from these populations, then our sampling distribution equals uh, of Z equals the quantity X bar 1 minus X bar 2 minus the quantity mu 1 minus mu 2 is divided by the square root quantity of um, the vari uh, variance 1 divided by N1 and variance 2 divided by N2. We say that is approximately standard normal if the conditions of the central limit theory theorem apply. Um, if the two populations are normal, then the sampling distribution of Z is exactly standard normal. All right, so they give us the example of aircraft engine life. All right, so aircraft engine life, we uh, uh, assume, uh, well, let me just read the setup here. The effective life of a component used in a jet turbine aircraft uh, engine is a random variable with a mean of 5,000 and a standard deviation of 40 hours and is close to a normal distribution. The engine manufacturer introduces an improvement into the manufacturing process that uh, for this component that changes the parameters to 5,050 uh, for the mean and 30 for the standard deviation. Random samples of size 16 and 25 are selected. What is the probability that the difference in the two sample means is at least uh, 25 hours? All right, so we're looking at X bar. The old process is 5,000 hours. The new process is 5,050 hours. So the difference between those two is 50. Our sam sample standard deviation for the old process is 40 hours. And for the new process, the sample standard deviation is 30 hours. And our sample sizes are 16 for the old process and 25 for the new process. And so we go into our calculations. But Let's switch over here and go through the calculations because you'll notice they don't really go through the calculations. They kind of give you the results. All right. We want probability that x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is greater than 25 hours. Uh, when we um, are uh, looking at that, we're going to say, all right, well, Z our z-score is going to be equal to 25 minus 50 
and that is divided by the square root quantity of 40 squared divided by 16 plus 30 squared divided by 25. And that will give us our z-score. All right, well, pardon me one second. while I pull up Excel to do that calculation. Since y'all missed the part on the last um, presentation when I couldn't find uh, my calculator. All right, so um, we're going to say that z equals, first of all, 25 minus 50. That is divided by the square root quantity of 40 raised to the second power divided by 16 plus 30 raised to the second power divided by 25. And I've forgotten my equal sign here but otherwise it looks like it's ready to go. And we come out with a z-score of negative 2.14373. Well, we can probably throw away 373 since that won't do us uh, much good at all. Um, so that means that our probability of um, uh, our probability of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 being greater than 25, oops, greater than 25, um, gives us a is equal to probability that our uh, Z is greater greater than Z and we already know that our Z is negative 2.14 so that is the probability that Z is greater than negative 2.14 which is equal to 1 minus the probability that z is less than negative 2.14, which means we can look that up in the book. Um, or we could cheat and say oh, right. or we could cheat and say that's equal to one minus normal distribution
Um, hmm, how did they do that in the in the? Uh, oh, no, right, norms S. All right, sorry. Uh, let's go back to this far. All right, norms S distribution, and our Z is negative 2.14373 and we want it to be cumulative so I hit true close parenthesis and Bob's your uncle All right, rename that, save as, uh, uh. all right, well, I'm not sure but I think I'll just go ahead and instead of saving it as examples chapter 7, I'll save it as chapter 7 examples. All right. So there you go. Bob's your uncle. Uh, now, before... Before we get, um, too far away, let's do another, uh, example. This example is the um, uh, the problem seven three uh, in the uh, fifth edition book. All right, so let me put that up here and make it really, really large. All right. PVC pipe is manufactured with a mean diameter of uh, 1.01 inch and a standard deviation of 0 0.003 inch. Find the probability that a random sample of n equals 9 sections of pipe will have a sample mean diameter greater than 0 0.009 inches and less than 1.012 inch. All right, so let me hold that here. All right, so what does that mean? We're looking for a probability between two uh, goalposts, so to speak. All right, so our mean diameter is 1.01 .01 inches. Oh, sorry. Let's go back to... Uh, all right. 
our mean is 1.01 inches. Our standard deviation is 0 0.003 inches. All right, so this is our given section. Uh, okay, maybe I should go one more. There we go. All right. Now, we want to find the probability that a random sample of nine sections um, will have a sample mean diameter Um, uh, so our um, uh, sample mean diameter, right? So in other words, we're looking for the probability that 1.009 inches is less than or equal to our um, uh, to our um, sample mean less than or equal to 1.012 inches. Of course, for doughty statisticians like yourselves, it is painfully obvious that we would take that and say our, uh, that our probability of being in between 0 0.009 inches, less than or equal um, uh, to mu, I'm going to go ahead and change to mu, less than or equal to 1.012 inches, right? How are we going to do that? We're going to change that to the probability of mu being less than or equal to 1.012 inches minus the probability of 1.009 being less than mu. All right, so then we're going to change that to our z-scores. Right, so this is the probability of Z less than or equal to 1.012 minus 1.01 divided by our 0 0.003, our standard deviation, divided by the square root of 9 minus probability of 1.009 minus 1.01 man I am just right at the edge here less than or equal to mu oh. <laughs> okay barely got it on there uh, divided by 0 0.003 divided by square root of 9. All right, well, when we say that, our problem becomes pretty easy. All we have to do is find the z-scores for these 
and then we can find our probability. All right, so I am now uh, Hmm, well maybe I'm not. All right, so I am going to move a little to the left. All right, so that means it's the probability that z is less than or equal. What is the square root of 9? It's obviously 3, which means that this bottom calculation becomes 0.001 And this uh, 1.012 minus 1.01 comes out to be 0 0.002. And what is, oh, wait, it's a negative. And what is, uh, 2 divided by 1, negative 2 in this case. All right, so again, this comes out to be 0 0.001. Oh, excuse me, that should be a positive 2. Lost my mind. All right, 0 0.009 minus 0 0.001 means that the probability of is 0 0.001, but this time it really is negative divided by 0 0.001, less than or equal uh, to z. Uh, in which case, this is negative 1, so it's minus probability that negative 1 is less than z. All right, well, a quick fumble in the back of the book says that a z-score of 2 is equal to 0 0.977250 and a z-score of negative 1 is 0 0.158 655. Um, all right, so what is that? That means this is 5, that makes it 4 here, 9, 1, 5, 6, Eight from six is eight six one. So that means our probability is zero point eight one eight five nine five. So do you doubt me? Do I doubt myself? Yes, I do. 
So I come over here and I uh, problem seven dash three. Uh oh, that's not a seven. That's an ampersand. All right, so, oh, I need to make it bigger. Make it big enough so y'all can see it. There you go, 280. All right, so again, our uh, probability that 1.009 is less than or equal to mu less than or equal to 1.012. All right, but I can come over here and I can go equals norm, choose norm s dist here. All right, my Z I know is two, comma, I want cumulative, so I put true, right parenthesis, minus norm, S dist again, minus one, comma, I want true, Again, right parenthesis, okay, oh, one mistake here, I forgot, oh, and y'all missed that whole thing because I had it on, um, uh, camera view instead of on uh, 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 PC view. So sorry about that. What a mistake on my part. All right, so we can see um, we can see that using the ordinary methods that we've already learned, we can calculate um, uh, we can calculate what the probabilities are. Uh, all right, well, that was a long way to go to do an example. Uh, okay, so now we've done two examples. Take that, forces of evil. All right. Now, in this schema, we have unbiased point estimators and biased point estimators. The point estimator capital theta hat is an unbiased estimator for our parameter theta if the expected value of capital theta hat is equal to theta. All right, so it's only an unbiased estimator if um, uh, if the expected value of capital theta hat is equal to theta. If the estimator is not unbiased, 
not unbiased. That means biased. Then the difference expected value of capital theta hat minus theta is called the bias of the estimator theta, capital theta hat. The mean of our sampling distribution of capital theta hat is equal to theta. All right, so here's an example where our sample mean and our variance are unbiased. So x is a random variable with mean mu and a variance of sigma squared. Let x1, x2, all the way up to xn be a random sample of size n. Show that the sample mean, x bar, is an unbiased estimator of mu. Uh, so, they do that by saying, all right, the expected value of x bar is equal to the expected value of x1 plus x2 plus x3 all the way up to adding up xn divided by n. All right, so, so far, no worries. Then they say, well, that is uh, equal to 1 divided by n times the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 plus the expected value dot, 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 up to plus the expected value of xn. Well, the expected value of each of those is mu. And how many mu's are there going to be? There's going to be n mu's. So 1 divided by mu times n mu's is just going to be equal to mu. All right, so now um, they want us to do the sample mean and variance in an unbiased estimator. All right, so we want to show the sample variance, S squared, is an unbiased estimator of sigma squared. The expected value of S squared is equal to the expected value of the summation from I equals 1 to N of the quantity uh, x, oops, x minus x bar squared, should be xi here, divided by n minus 1. That is going to be equal to 1 minus, uh, divided by the quantity n minus 1 of the expected value of the summation from i equals 1 to n of xi squared plus x bar squared minus 2 times x bar times xi. That's going to be equal to 1 my, uh, divided by the quantity n minus 1 times the expected value of uh, the summation of i equals 1 to n of x i squared minus n times x bar squared is equal um, uh, equal to 1 minus uh, 1 divided by the quantity n minus 1 
times the summation from i equals 1 to n of e of xi squared minus n times e of x bar squared. All right, so that then becomes equal to a 1 divided by the quantity n minus 1 times the quantity uh, summation of uh, from i equals 1 to n of mu squared plus sigma squared minus n times the quantity uh, mu squared plus sigma squared divided by n quantity. Um, ooh, ooh, pardon me. Putting that all together, that means that it's equal to 1 divided by the quantity n minus 1 times the quantity n times mu squared plus n times sigma squared minus n times mu squared minus uh, sigma squared equals 1 minus uh, 1 divided by n minus 1 times n minus 1 sigma squared equals sigma squared. Oy vey, did we go a long way to get that. All right, so then we want to think about the minimum variance unbiased estimators. So if we consider all unbiased estimators of theta, the one with the smallest variance is called the minimum variance unbiased estimator, or MVIEW. Um, lovely, another acronym. Uh, if x1, x2, uh, dot, 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 up to xn is a random sample of size n from a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then the sample x bar is the minimum variance unbiased estimator for mu. Um, all right, so our standard error of an estimator uh, capital theta hat is its standard deviation, which is given by sigma of, uh, or the, uh, the standard deviation of capital theta hat is equal to the square root of the variance of capital theta hat. If the standard error involves unknown parameters that can be estimated, substitution of these values into sigma, uh, uh, into the standard deviation of capital theta hat, produces an estimated standard error denoted by um, a sigma hat of uh, capital theta hat. Equivalent notation of, uh, of sigma hat of capital theta hat is equal to the sample standard deviation of uh, capital theta hat equals the standard error of capital theta hat. Mm. 
<clears throat> if the uh, Xi's are from a distribution that is normal with mu and uh, as its mean and sigma squared as its variance, then the standard error of X bar is uh, uh, sigma of X bar equals the standard deviation divided by square root of n. If our standard deviation is not known, then our sigma hat of uh, X bar is equal to S divided by the square root of n. All right, so then we do a, um, an example. Uh, it's 7.4 in this slideshow. I'm willing to bet in your book it is not 7.4, uh, just because, oh, I'm lying, it is 7.4 in your book as well. All right, so these observations are 10 measurements of thermal conductivity of Armco iron. Okay, what is thermal conductivity? That is how fast heat will go through this iron. Since we don't know the standard deviation, we use S to calculate our standard error. Our, um, now, and, um, uh, ba -ba -ba. uh, since the standard error is 0.2% of the mean, the mean estimate is fairly precise. We can be very confident that the true population mean is um, uh, 41.924 plus or minus 2 times 0 0.0898 or between 41.744 and 42.104. You think I'm letting you guys get away with something like that? Oh, hell no. I am demanding a recalculation. Oh. Example seven dash four, and let's make it big again as we usually do. All right, so I paste the information on here, and it shows nothing at all. What happened with that? Okay, apparently I've got to do it the old-fashioned way and copy out of the book. Damn it, I hate when that happens. All right, so here are my X eyes. Forty-one point six zero. 
uh, 41.48, 42.34, oh, too many, uh, 41.95, uh, 41.86, uh, 42.18, uh, 41.72, 42.26, and 42.04. All right. Now, I can calculate my sample mean equals, oops, average, just highlight all my numbers, right parenthesis. Uh, what else do I need? I need my uh, standard deviation. All right, so my S equals. All right, now remember it's sample standard deviation. So S T D E. All right, and I go down to uh, stat div s. Once again, I highlight um, my uh, uh, numbers, close parenthesis, and there you go. Now, what else do I need? I need n equals. Well, I already know it's 10 samples, but let me show off and uh, and use uh, the count function instead. All right. So, fantastic. All right, so I know that my standard error is going to be equal to my sample standard deviation divided by the square root SQRT, left parenthesis, of 10. So, as you can see, we're getting the same numbers that are in the book on page 159. Uh, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Uh, uh, So, how did they get that percentage? Well, I just glanced in the book to check that out. All right, so our standard error percentage equals, equals our sample mean divided by Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, divided by the um, standard error. All right. That, that ain't right. Oh, okay. I know. I flipped my numbers. All right. So 
uh, standard error divided by, there you go. All right, so it's, if we do this as a percentage, and, ah, uh, there we go, percentage, 0%, I want more numbers than that. All right, there you go. All right, the standard error being so low means that's a pretty good estimate of, uh, of the actual mean. So there you go, Bob's your uncle. All right, where are we sitting? Uh, bootstrap. All right. I'm not sure I want to talk about bootstrap standard error. Um, but what we could do is do another All right, let's do another uh, problem where we calculate standard error. All right, so I'm going to rename this problem. And which problem is it? 7 28. All right, then I'm going to enlarge this outrageously. All right, so we have our x i's, x i. Data on pull-off force in pounds for connectors used in an automobile engine application are as follows. Okay, well, that's uh, pretty easy. So, 79.3. Uh, 75.1, 78 78.2, 74.1, 73.9, 75.0, 77.6, 77.3, 78 78.8, 74.5, 74.0, 74.7, 74.9, 72.9, 73.8, 74 point two, seventy eight point one, seventy five 78.1, 75.4, 76.3, 75.3, 76.2, 74.9, 78.0, 75.1, and 
76.8. Okay, made a mistake on this one and hit two numbers. It should be 75.1. All right. All right, so you'll notice we got a lot of data points here. Uh, all right, so first we want to think about the sample mean, right? We're just going to do average left parenthesis equals average left parenthesis. I highlight all my numbers. I do a right parenthesis, right? So it's equal average from A2 to A27. All right, so we've got our sample mean. Uh, let's see. Calculate a point estimate of the mean pull-off force. All right, so we've done that. That's our sample mean of all connectors in the population. State which estimator you used and why. Uh, okay, well, we used the sample mean. Uh, calculate a point estimate of the pull-off force value that separates the weakest 50% of connectors in the population from the strongest 50%. All right, how do we do that? That means that the point where we separate the 50 lowest pieces of data from the 50 highest pieces of data is the median. And we know how to do that easily enough. We come down here and we highlight all of our numbers. All right, so it's telling me way down here, <laughs> way down here that there's 26 rows. All right, I leave those highlighted. I go to data. And I go, I want the lowest to the highest. And I want to continue with the current selection, sort. And now all I have to do is come down here and see where our lucky 13th point is. All right, that means that our, because there's 26 data points, that means between 13 and 14 is our median. Okay, so we can see that 13 and 14 Are right here, right? So I can say my median equals, and I can do this one of several ways. I can just go, uh, oops, equals left parenthesis uh, A14 plus A15 divided by 2. Or I could have done equals average and just put in those two points. Right? There you go. All right. Um, calculate point estimates of the population variance and the population standard deviation. All right. Well, um, my estimated population variance is going to be my sample standard uh, my sample variance so equals um, VAR 
right? I'm going to go for var dot s, and once again, I'm going to just illuminate a two through a twenty seven, right parenthesis, and I've got a population variance estimate. All right, the estimated standard deviation. Well, I could just take the square root of the 2.738154, or I could say equals S T D E V dot S. And again, I just highlight my numbers. Close parenthesis. Now, damn it, you're supposed to go back up here. Right? So there you go. All right. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, all right. Calculate the standard error of the point estimate found in part A. All right. Well, easy enough. Uh, standard error equals all right so that is going to be equal to my standard deviation divided by and I know it's 26 numbers and I'm going to put that in or I could just put count and highlight my numbers again. But wait, what am I missing? It's got to be the square root of that quantity. This is why sometimes when you're working with Excel, things start to get really messy. You have one, uh, uh, you have one function that's nested in another, nested in another, nested in another. All right. Now, uh, they want the interpretation. Uh, all right. Well, that means we want to go ahead and say equals our standard error divided by our sample mean. We want that as a percentage. And again, we want it. All right. So we're going to say it's a good estimator. Although usually we spell estimator with fewer A's. All right, so there you go. Bob's your uncle. Um, okay, calculate a point estimate of the proportion of all connectors in the population whose pull-off force is less than 73 pounds. Okay, well, we know it's um, so we're going to say percentage less than 73 pounds. Now, how do we do that? Well, we've already got everything organized by, uh, by the pull-off force from the lowest to the highest. And it looks like we only have one that is under 73 pounds. So therefore, I'm going to say that's equal 
to that 1 divided by our total number of 26. Right? And we can convert that to a percentage, but I want a more accurate estimate, so I put another digit on there, and Bob's your uncle. Uh, all right. Hmm. Now, I'm really not excited uh, about going further into this at the moment. Um, so, I tell you what, let me set up a problem here. I'm going to put this file on your uh, Moodle. All right, and... All right, so here are our X eyes. Four twenty five, four thirty one, four sixteen, four nineteen, four twenty one, four thirty six. 418, 410, 431, 433, 423, 426, 410, 435, uh, 436, 428, 411, 426, 409, 437, 422, 428, 413, 416. All right. But I can see here I forgot to uh, hit the enter key, so I'll fix that. Uh, all right, data on oxide thickness of semiconductors are as follows. All right, so these are the thickness of oxide uh, conductors, and there are apparently 14 of them. All right, so the, what does the sample mean? Uh, what is Sample standard deviation uh, What else do we want to know? We want to know What is standard error and let's see um, what is the median
and percentage with oxide thickness greater than four hundred and thirty. Okay, so, look, this gives you a chance to work with, uh, to work with the um, uh, Excel and to calculate this stuff separately than the homework that I'm going to assign on Wiley Plus. Okay, so um, uh, so feel free to uh, uh, to do this. You have the example problem twenty eight, which went through the whole uh, schmageggy of how to calculate it. Um, I will. Uh, Oh dear. Uh, uh, uh. There you go. Alright, file, save as. Yes, we want an Excel workbook. Uh, no, we want the D. Save. I will put this on. Um, uh, I will put this on Moodle for you uh, to be able to um, Okay, we're on 17. Boy, I hope I can remember that. Uh, I'll put it on Moodle for you so that you can um, uh, if you want, you can solve that last problem, and if you send it to me, uh, I'll give you extra credit. Uh, okay, well, that brings us to the end of today's uh, cavalcade of excitement, if I may so describe it. Please stay safe, stay isolated. This won't last forever, and when the fields are white with daisies, we'll meet again. Okay, and here I am trying to... <laughs> you know, it really chaps my buttocks that I can't show y'all your midterms. Um, uh, but, oh well. <laughs>